some dirty little secrets in commercial real estate that a lot of owners do not know about. Firstly, there is no centralized commercial MLS. There's multiple ones in any location. In Southern California alone, there's about four or five. For instance, in residential real estate, there is a centralized MLS where if you list something, you are required by that MLS to put it on the MLS within a few days of listing that property. In commercial real estate, that doesn't happen. There is no set time and agents don't necessarily even put it on one of the many different commercial MLSs. The con in that is that owners don't always get the best tenants or the best buyers. It is basically up to the agent or broker to find that buyer or tenant. Many times commercial agents want to double end a project. That means making double commission off of that certain project so they have a benefit of not always listing it on the commercial MLS. You can see the disservice for owners and banks. Banks lend on the occupancy rate of a particular property. So if the property is leased out, the bank will lend on it because they see there's income coming in for the next five, six, seven years. And if you would have listed it on multiple MLSs, commercial MLSs, you would get those tenants and great buyers that are willing to pay top dollar. So as you can see, many larger brokerages don't always have their client's best interest in mind when they're not advertising the project and keeping it as a pocket listing so that they can double end it. That is a problem for owners. If you use me as a commercial real estate agent, I advertise as much as possible and show you where I advertise. We want to get the biggest bang for our client's dollar by advertising as wide as possible to get those tenants, to get those agents, to get those different buyers into those locations for the most amount of money in this market. Another issue that a lot of people don't realize are the forms. In residential real estate, there are forms that are standardized. We call those in California CAR forms, California Association of Realtor Forms. Those have been tested time and time and time again in the courts to be proven and to hold up in court. In commercial real estate, they use a standardized form, kind of, that is called AIR forms. These forms are a lot better than just no forms at all. However, they haven't been tested as much as the car forms have within the court system. And a lot of the AIR forms require some finessing. You have to do some adding and subtracting, removing certain things for property management or for a buyer because of certain zoning and city and county and state regulations. Personally, I like to use the car forms for something like a $3 million project or below. Anything that's above that, AIR forms are very good as a baseline. Now you have to customize it according to the project, but those are a good starting point. Another dirty little secret is that if you are an inexperienced commercial agent, many more experienced agents will stab other agents in the back for commissions. They will not allow other agents to get commissions or they will hold out showing the property to the other agent's buyer or they will hold out by not even accepting an offer and showing it to their client. My name is Eric Kovshinikov. I've been doing real estate since 1997 on the investor side, on the buyer side, on the developer side, on the residential side, on the commercial side, the brokerage side. Give me a call. I would love to help you in all of your real estate needs, whether it's commercial or residential. I do both. I would love to help you with all your real estate needs. I look forward to hearing from you.